Hey, good morning. Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 16 to 19 this morning. Let's read and then think. Now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is today not the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord, and he will send thunder and rain, that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking a king for yourselves. So Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said to Samuel, Pray for your servants to the Lord your God, that we may not die. For we have added to all our sins the evil of asking a king for ourselves. So Samuel had warned them, remember back in chapter 8, you really don't want a king. You don't, you don't want a monarchy. That's not what you're really interested in. Oh, yes, but we do. We want a king to judge us like all the nations. And then the promise came, you know, well, give them a king, but, but I'm not going to relent. Once they make this commitment, they will get their king, and I'm not going to back out of it. So, And yet the people all through chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 11, and now we're in chapter 12, the people really didn't grasp the, the wrongness of what they were doing. But of course, as it was described, they were rejecting God's direct rule of the nation with him as their king, and then ruling through the human judge. They were rejecting that and going to a human king, uh, which was certainly not his best plan. But he went along with it. So here we are. Saul's been crowned. Samuel has been vindicated. Remember, when I was judge, nothing really, uh, there was no infraction against you. And they said, yes, that's true. You haven't stolen anything from us or received any bribes. Now comes this. This is kind of like the last piece here. And what it's going to be is, is what? The people actually admit they're wrong. And you know, about the time when Samuel's talking to them and said, by the way, remember today's the wheat harvest or so, isn't it? I'm sure a lot of people in the crowd began to get cold feet, saying like, why is he mentioning that? Oh no, because yes, you don't want your thunder and rain to come down and destroy, uh, damage your wheat harvest. So this is God's judgment upon the people. They were not attentive. They didn't do what he said. They didn't back out. They just kept to it. And ta-da, now they've got a king. God isn't going to back away from it. And they've been wrong. But important, important note, they at least came to the spot here where they recognized we were wrong. And they they actually verbalized it. They actually stated it. Uh, we have added this to all of our sins, the evil of asking a king for ourselves. So good for the people, but now they're going to have to live with it. What kind of application do we have here for us? Well, again, be careful because many times if you push hard enough, God will let you have what you want. God does not just usually jump up and just stop you from getting something. Many times he lets us learn the hard way. He lets us learn by going ahead and going in the wrong direction, going in the wrong line. And then we learn the consequences or the entailments of something that we, we decided to do. And we knew it wasn't God's best will, but we plowed on anyway, like uh, we knew what we were doing. And then we got crunched. So God does allow some of that so that we can learn because after all, He's training us not for a lifetime, not for a year. He's training us for eternity. We, we need to learn how to trust him. We need to learn that his ways are correct. His ways are right. So we want to be careful with this. We sometimes will find that God will let us have what we want, but it is not always the best. In fact, when is it the best? God's way is always the best. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, your way, we are certain and we see it and we learn it from the Bible your way is always best. And yet many times we uh, push, push, push along and we, we have it our own way and our way is definitely less than the best. So please, Lord, help us to follow your lead. Help us to be more attentive to your leading. Help your people as a group not to go off and, and try to be like all the other nations. Talk about dubious. Uh, but Lord, many times we are, I'm sure, guilty of that. So open our eyes that we may see. Help us to follow your pathway your way of being the church, not the ways that make the most sense for marketing or what people expect or what people want, but the ways the ways that are consonant with the Bible. Thank you for being our, our God. May we serve you and be your people, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, we want to be on God's side, and many times we choose our own side. But let's do better. Let's do better. Here's a lesson for us right here. God be with you today.